Hello everybody. Uh, obviously every painting starts with a blank canvas and this is this is that. Uh, now this one's going to be a night scene so it needs at least three coats of paint all over it to get it down to the required uh, density. So we've cut all that out and this is uh, now three coats later and uh, me starting to work on the dam. Now as you probably guessed this is the Myrna Dam and of course this is the Dam Buster Raid. Uh, this particular painting uh, shows ED-825 flown by Joe McCarthy on its way back after bombing the Sorper. Now on board is the late and great Johnny Johnson and uh, I had many conversations with Johnny over the years and he described uh, this particular part of the mission where they came across the Myrna Dam on the way home. Now they saw the water coming out of the dam and it was the, the strange thing is it was only 10 minutes or so after the other aircraft had attacked the Mona Dam. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, Joe McCarthy was very very late because he he took off late but actually they were they were attacking the Sorpa pretty much at the same time as Guy Gibson and the rest were attacking the Mona. So when uh, Johnny and Joe McCarthy flew over uh, the Mona, it had only just been breached so the, the water level was extremely high and the power of the water must have been colossal. I remember Johnny said to me that it looked like an inland sea just spreading up the valley or down the valley. So this is what I was trying to show but the first the first job really is to paint the background and the uh, the trees on the surrounding hills. Now to do this they were backlit by the moon so uh, it's, it's quite an easy thing it's just a case of doing uh, lighter outlines to the top of the trees uh, and let the shadows do the rest. Same with this hill here it, again it's just um, putting a correct density of uh, colour in and then um, just adding outlines to the trees. Same with the aeroplane really. Aircraft is mainly in shadow because it's against the light but the edges will attract a very very bright highlight so as you can see I'm putting uh, highlights onto the top of the cockpit and the top of the engine and so on uh, and now I'm filling in the shadows a little bit but again it's very very subtle on the shadows because at the end of the day this is at night and um, you know it's against the light. Pulling the roundels in and the code letters um, again in theory because moonlight is quite blue then the the code letters shouldn't be very red they should be quite neutral but uh, we use a bit of artistic license here just to uh, give that effect. So the aircraft was pretty much done um, but the main part of this painting is the water because ultimately this is the the story of this painting. It's this huge amount of water cascading through the breach in the Myrna Dam and I was thinking about it. Uh, th there's absolutely no photographs of it obviously so it's a case of well trying to imagine what it looked like. Uh, so again first things first put the dam in. Um, the, these uh, vents at the top were are always are very difficult because you have to do all these lines and shadows and things and get them all looking uh, consistent which which is really dif difficult it takes an awful long time um, but then the fun bit was the water because uh, as I say nobody really has worked out or nobody's got a photograph of how the water looked 10 minutes after it, it was breached but it must have been a huge flow of water and I, I would imagine to be honest that there would have been a huge amount of spray uh, in, in the air and probably it might have concealed most of this. So I, I put a lot of foam in, a lot of splashes in and of course with this you can actually use a reasonably broad brush and reasonably light white paint to give it a real effect. So this is what I'm doing now, just putting in the ripples of the splashes hitting the water that's already spreading down the valley um, and just blending it, adding more white and then blending it again just to try and give an impression of the power. It, it's, there's no rule book for this, it really was a case of making it up as I went along. And then here you can see me spreading the spray and the steam or the smoke, uh, whatever you like. Um, and there were already some islands forming in this water, so some of the high ground around the destroyed power station and a few little trees were left on top of that little island and along with the trees down the side of the, uh, the, the walls as well. 
So these little trees were left, left standing, and of course these little um, uh, houses, these little buildings at the bottom of the towers were also there, um, but most of them were washed away. And then of course you have the famous false trees that don't look, didn't in real life look like anything like trees at all. Um, they were just um, frameworks and things. And then finally, um, we have the moonlight on the water, which is a way of just finishing it off nicely. Now this painting was uh, actually commissioned as part of the ED825 Lancaster watch project by British watchmakers Zero West. And there are three watches in the range. Uh, each watch dial is based upon the all-important cockpit altimeter. But what makes these watches truly special is the material on the back. Now wreckage from ED825, which we recovered ourselves in northern France a few years ago, has been smelted down and cast into discs at the back of each watch making each one really unique. And there's a free book with each watch as well, uh, with the painting on the cover, and of course, there's the final result. So the title of the painting is Dan Buster's Time to Head Home, and this is my own personal tribute to the late, great Johnny Johnson, who passed away very recently at the age of 101. God bless you, Johnny. Featuring rare metal from Dam Buster ED-825. The Lancaster Watch Range from Zero West. True history on the wrist. Zero West. There's a time and place for everything.